Hello YouTube. So um, today I'm going to do a quick video on how to repair the transmitter wheel on a Spectrum DX4C remote control transmitter. So you're going to need some tools and these are the ones that I used. You need a good set of tweezers, um, a number two long shank Phillips head screwdriver. Um, you are probably not going to be able to use um, the kind with a removable tip um, because the shanks on those are too thick. So I had to get a smaller shank, a narrower shank screwdriver um, because some of the screws in this transmitter are fairly deep in their wells. Um, I'm going to need a hair uh, dryer or a heat gun in order to heat up some of the decals. Uh, you're going to need a hobby knife or something with a nice sharp edge to get under um, some plastic, uh, a spudger to use for scraping up underneath the decals, and a flashlight. Um, it came in handy for me. I don't know, you may or may not need it. Um, it was hard for me to see the screws once I got the transmitter apart, and that flashlight kind of helped. So there are 10 total screws that hold this transmitter together. Six of them are visible and four of them are hidden beneath various items um, on the transmitter. So in order to get to the first pair of hidden screws, you need to uh, remove the rubber in the grip. Now the rubber is held in there with these tabs that fit into these slots. So um, get your finger under there, peel it up gently from the corner when you feel the tension. Um, you should be able to, to figure out how to work your thumb or whatever so that this um, little rubber tab isn't torn. So just be careful and it was actually pretty easy. Um, to, to pull these rubber tabs out there. The, both the front and the back are held in in a similar fashion. Uh, once you get the, the rubber peeled away, you'll see that here are the two screws that are hidden underneath the rubber. So you can hold, those, hold the rubber back and um, go ahead and remove these. I only removed the, the tabs on the left-hand side of the transmitter. I didn't remove it from the right-hand side of the transmitter. I didn't need to. Um, I just held the rubber back when I undid these screws. But it will tend to want to snap back into position because um, it, it's molded that way. So just keep that in mind. So in order to get to the second set of screws, um, you need to remove a couple of decals. And I saw some instructions online um, where the gentleman who did it, uh, all they did was drill a hole or cut a hole with a hobby knife in these two positions. So if you want to ruin your stickers, then by all means go for it. But it looks a little ghetto. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and used a heat gun, heated up the um, adhesive for the decals, and then I used a metal spudger to peel the decal off. Now, um, this decal is... Uh, you can kind of see here in this picture, this little close-up picture, that it, the, the adhesive isn't your normal sticker adhesive, and this isn't just a normal sticker. It's kind of like plasticky almost, and it feels like they use um, a paper-based double-sided tape, so that when you peel it off, the, the tape, the paper between the adhesive layers is what gives way, so you end up with this sort of fuzzy paper surface um, on both the transmitter and the back side of the sticker. Uh, when you remove this wheel here, the circular sticker, uh, be sure to kind of avoid these tabs on the corners, these four corner tabs. They're much narrower and um, they're easily bent or possibly even torn off if you're not careful. So because I was using a spudger and I was scraping underneath, um, not realizing that it was a paper sandwich between two adhesive layers, um, I did scrape up some of this adhesive like this. So um, if that happens to you, uh, just go ahead and rub it away with your finger and you should be able to peel off the, the ridge that's created and try to get it as smooth as possible, both on the back side of the decal as well as on the transmitter. Leave the paper. The paper is not going to be a problem, but what will be a problem is this three-dimensional sort of thing. You want to tear that off and make it as flat as possible. Then once you have the decals off, you see you can get to these two um, screw wells very easily, and you can remove those. So this is what it looks like with all the screws removed. And then you'll need to remove the wheel. So um, the wheel has a screw down the center shaft, and that's held in um, underneath this, uh, this little plug thing. So I used a hobby knife to get between the, the wheel itself and the plug and pry it up gently. And then once that was up, I was able to easily access the screw that was holding that wheel in. And then once you do that, you can gently pull that wheel off 
and this is what you'll end up with. Is This is where the screw is held inside, and this is part of the steering mechanism here. As you can see, there's a ball bearing, and there's a little bit of dust you might want to clean off. It isn't a bad idea, actually, at this point to um, get some bearing oil or some 3-in-1 and put a drop on this and work the, work the bearings nice and clean. So once you get all the screws out, then you can split the case. Now, um, I left the wheel side down, and then I slowly lifted off the left side of the transmitter housing. Um, all the Everything is bolted to the right-hand side, so this came up very easily. Um, when you're doing it, be real careful because the battery box is just held in there by gravity, and it can fall out, possibly tearing off the solder joint here on the battery box itself or on the PCB. Um, but that's really the only tricky part of doing this. Just be real careful. I didn't even need to use any kind of metal or plastic spudger to, to crack this case. It just came off just slick as can be. Once you get the case apart, then you can get to the steering module. Now the steering module is held in with three screws on this plastic component here. So there are these two screws here on the top, leave those be. They are what hold the steering module together. There's this base, this plastic base underneath that, that holds the steering module into the case itself. And then there's this PCB behind that are also held in with screws. So this screw obviously is very easy to see, so you can go ahead and remove that. This screw here is not too bad. Um, it's pretty easy to move these wires out of the way. Go ahead and remove that. This one here is a little bit of a bugger because it's underneath this flexible um, board here. It's not a board, what's it called? A ribbon cable. Um, these ribbon cables are fairly brittle, so when you're getting to this screw here um, that's underneath this ribbon cable, um, you want to go ahead and be, be real careful that you're not pushing up against this ribbon cable because you could crack it. If you crack it and break it, um, then you're done. The transmitter will no longer work. So that's probably the most sensitive part of this entire process is this screw C right here. Once you get the three screws out, you should be able to lift it up. Um, I would say that uh, um, a magnetic screwdriver is probably very useful in this point at this point because it'll help um, keep the screw on the screwdriver tip itself. Um, not so much when you're removing this whole process, but when you go to put this back together. So this is upside down now. I've removed it from the see down here is the hole where this shaft goes down into. So um, I removed it up and hung it over the edge. Be real careful. The upper hook, this is the upper hook, remember, because it's upside down. So the upper hook here is only held in by gravity. This screw is a tension adjustment screw. So it's at its maximum tension tension right now, so if there was a spring connected between these like they're supposed to be, um, it would be at maximum tension and then you can screw it down and then this would re reduce down, down, down so that this, the spring was not under as much tension. Um, so you're going to want to leave this at maximum tension for this repair. Okay, um, so that's what that looks like. Um, but because it's only held in by gravity, when you take it out and flip it out, um, mine fell out, and then this rocker arm bar, you see it's held in here just by gravity on this pin, that also fell out, so I had to reassemble this bit here and this bit here. But if that happens to you, you can use this image as a reference on how it should go back together. So once you're um, done, you should see that you should have 11 screws um, of a long length and three screws from inside holding the module, the steering module, into the transmitter case that are slightly shorter. So keep them separate. Now this silver ring is the, the end of the spring that broke off. Okay, so you need to hunt down that broken spring. So um, when I removed the, the the steering module from the transmitter housing and I lifted it up, this little ring fell right out, no problem. But I couldn't find the spring. This is what it should look like. This is from another transmitter repair that I did on an Arma ATX 300 transmitter on the throttle trigger. Um, and that video is also here on YouTube. So this is what that looks should look like. Um, but the... The Spectrum one is black in color, I believe, um, but I couldn't find Well, actually, it shouldn't be black in color, should it, because this is silver. All right, so scratch that. Um, this is what it should look like, um, and apparently these springs break all the time. Now, um, when I called, I, I'm three weeks within my warranty on this transmitter, and when I called uh, Horizon Hobbies, they were very gracious. They're sending me two springs, um, and the reason why I chose to do this repair was because uh, my thought process was, well, if in less than a year this spring broke, and 
I've seen on boards and forums that other people are also having a problem with these springs breaking inside their transmitters, that maybe replacing it with a part that I know is going to fail is not the smartest move. So that's why I'm using uh, this repair here. We're going to see how it goes. But at any rate, this is the, the spring in roughly the size that you should find inside your transmitter housing. Uh, I shook the hell out of my transmitter um, upside down, uh, wiggling it all around, and the spring is nowhere to be found. So um, this is the repair that I used. So my daughter has a rainbow loom bracelet making kit that has all these tiny little round rubber bands. Uh, they're square in cross section. Um, so what I did was I took one of these and I formed it into this sort of infinity symbol. And then I rolled it over to create a double loop, um, holding it between uh, the tweezers here at the cross section of the double loop. That's how I was able to hold it. And then um, I hooked it over the lower and upper arm on the transmitter steering module. Um, so I ended up using a black one um, instead of the red one that I show you in the demonstration, but it's still, it's all the same. So um, the thing with this is this lower arm, okay, um, is very narrow and you have to double up the rubber band one on top of the other, which is totally fine. Part of the reason why I use these rainbow loom rubber bands is because they're square and cross section, so they're not going to roll and fall off. And then up here, I was able to keep, get them side by side so that they're nice and flat right up against the thing. So this is, I think, the ideal way to get the rubber band attached to these two things. Now, what I found for tension, so at this point you should test for tension. You should give the, the shaft here a little twist left and right with your fingers. Now, be careful because you you can over rotate and pop the rocker arm off and then you have to reassemble the whole thing which will be a pain so you know give it a um, uh, an eighth to a quarter of a twist just to test the tension of this rubber band to see if you like it if you don't um, you'd have to find a smaller rubber band um, now in my daughter's kit you know, I've got a massive bag of rubber bands to choose from and I chose one of the the smaller but they, she did have some that were even smaller than this. So um, apparently rainbow loom rubber bands do not have a tight tolerance in manufacturing or they make them specifically in different sizes. So I would say the rubber band that I used for this is what in her bag equates to a size medium. The large was way too big and you can only get two loops as you can see any more. Um, if I tried to do a triple loop on this, it would be too tall and it would fall off the hook. So you can only double loop it and um, hunt around. If the tension isn't to your liking, hunt around in the bag and maybe you'll find a, one that's a little bit smaller and that will tighten it up. Now, if you do go too small, you can always loosen the tension spring, right? So you can screw this down, which will lower this arm, which will then reduce the tension. So that's how you can fiddle with the tension on this. All right, so once you get it all, um, once you get the rubber band in place, reverse order of everything that I just said. You'd put the steering module back in, screw the three screws back in. That's where the magnetic screwdriver tip will really come in handy. Once you get all that in, then you can replace the housing, um, get all the screws screwed in, replace the grip, and then you'll end up with this. So now you've got this nasty ghetto looking side of your transmitter. But we don't want that. We want something to look sharp. So um, I dug into my art supplies and I found this um, acid-free dual uh, high tack spray adhesive. Okay, um, I made sure that this was as smooth as I could just by rubbing it with my finger and removing any um, uh, adhesive that built up into a ridge. I did the same thing on the back of the, the decals and then I um, really sprayed a liberal coat. I would say I went across this probably four or five times with the spray adhesive and then I just set it down on here, rubbed it nice and smooth, did the same thing for the